some games just don't get the chance to make it big. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 failed gaming franchises. What we have searched for so long, we now will see. For this list, we're taking a look at the potential game series that could have expanded into full-fledged franchises, but instead flamed out and disappeared into obscurity. I think we can handle that. Whether due to poor timing, bad promotion, or simply low quality, these franchises ended without dignity or grace. And worse than that, I was outsmarted by a turkey and a rat! Number 10, Advent Rising. Release in three, two, one. Mental note, if you're aiming to start a trilogy, make sure your first game is as rock solid as possible. I was told to give you a quick refresher on sidearms use. Otherwise, the end result might be similar to Advent Rising, an action-adventure game about human hero Gideon Wheat's battle to protect humanity from the extraterrestrial race known as the Seekers. The game had more than a few good selling points, such as a script written by Orson Scott Card and a soundtrack with work by Tommy Tallarico. I need something fresh, something with flavor. But none of it made up for the poor sales and lukewarm reviews. So much for the planned sequels. This is a great tragedy. You will all be killed. What kind of weapons will they be using? Number 9. Medieval Series The Gex games might be odd, but this concept is more of a loss. <laughs> Beginning with the 1998 game Medieval for the Sony PlayStation, this series was pitched as a blend of gothic imagery and comedic horror. In my culture, we treat the guests with courtesy. However, the franchise never expanded beyond three games, including a rather mediocre remake of the original entitled Medieval Resurrection. Maybe this time we truly defeat him. Lead designer Jason Wilson would eventually reveal that, despite having a solid fan base, the series was never given the green light by Sony to continue. If I were a failed one-eyed warrior, I'd make myself scarce, mate. Number 8. Blaster Master Series For a series that's been around for a while, it doesn't seem to have done much with that time. Blaster Master is a run-and-gun platforming game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, focused on the exploits of a tank piloting boy named Jason. The game's five sequels kept the series going, though critics felt the quality wavered with each subsequent game. Finally, in 2010, gamers retreated to Blaster Master Overdrive, but by that point, the writing was on the wall. Number 7. Prey Such an interesting idea and such a disappointing outcome. 3D Realms had a dream in 1995 to make an innovative portal-based game featuring a Native American hero. We shall talk again soon. However, over the next 11 years, a grueling sequence of setbacks and changes in plans delayed said game's release. Keeper! Show yourself! Though Prey did eventually hit store shelves to positive reviews and commercial success, the future of the franchise was left in limbo when new owner Bethesda Software cancelled Prey 2. Somebody shoot this Their reason being that the game wasn't measuring up to their standard of quality after being in development for six years. We had no idea that we would become their prey. Number 6. Rage Speaking of Bethesda's properties, here's a potential series that had every reason to succeed. I put a lot at risk to save you. For one, Rage was a new intellectual property from id Software, the makers of Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. For another, it was a post-apocalyptic tale reliant on the then-new id Tech 5 engine, and it featured top-tier voice actors. We've got bandits all over these hills. We best get going. Yet, upon release, the game faced criticism for its weak story and uninteresting characters, which was all compounded by a rough launch that featured numerous bugs, the most glaring of which being the infamous texture pop-ins. Number 5. Kane and Lynch Series There'll be no more tales for these dead men to tell. Starting in 2007, the Kane and Lynch series moved forward in earnest with third-person action and a grim story about the titular hitmen coming into conflict with their former employers. You don't have to involve my family. They don't even know Kane, me. stop. I can't listen to your pathetic excuses anymore. Right out of the gate, though, 
the franchise generated a doozy of a scandal when it was discovered that GameSpot reviewer Jeff Gerstmann was fired over his less than stellar review of the game. But it's impossible to care about anything that's going on in the story because every single character in the game is almost completely unlikable. Despite this falter, Kane and Lynch's first adventure sold well enough to warrant a sequel, Dog Days. Sadly, developer IO Interactive elected to put all of its focus into its Hitman franchise, officially canceling plans for a third Kane and Lynch game in the process. Mr. Lynch. Number 4. State of Emergency Series A more fitting title for a stillborn franchise we might never find. Violence continues on the streets of Capital City. State of Emergency was conceived as a budget title, a small-scale beat-em-up known for then-graphic violence and a satirical edge to its humor. Despite the goodwill, though, people were less than receptive to its sequel, a game largely panned by critics for lacking quality or fun. Add to that the controversy over the first game's events being similar to the 1999 Seattle World Trade Organization protests, and it's pretty clear where things went wrong. The citywide state of emergency is still in effect. Number 3. Bubsy the Bobcat Series With a catchphrase like, what could possibly go wrong, these guys must have seen the writing on the wall. It's me, the print of personality, Bubsy! Anyway, Bubsy in Claw's Encounters of the Furred Kind began the mascot-based series that tried balancing platforming action and more than a healthy dose of puns, clearly trying to cash in on the current popularity of Sonic the Hedgehog. Though Bubsy the Bobcat's next two games were generally viewed as respectable but underwhelming, most notably due to shoddy controls, it took the universally reviled fourth installment, Bubsy 3D, to end the franchise for good. Number 2. Ride to Hell Jake, on your feet. It's time. There might be a joke about seeking retribution somewhere, but this one isn't even worth it. I wonder why Max all protective. Ride to Hell Retribution was pitched in 2008 as an open-world game about riding and fighting atop all sorts of motorcycles. But more often than not, the odds will not be in Jack's favor. Yet, it took five years and one restructuring for the game to see the light of day, finally being released as a more restricted and more typical action-adventure type game. Don't you move now, Chiripa. More to the point, though. Widespread disdain for retribution among gamers has ensured that the planned spin-off titles and any theoretical sequels would not ever see release. I guess we'll never get to see Ride to Hell, Dry Hump to Heck. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Too Human Like humanity itself, this series opener was flawed. Unlike us, it couldn't overcome said flaws to find greatness. Odin's technology makes gods of men. Instead, Too Human fell victim to a drawn-out development cycle. The story goes that it was originally envisioned as a PlayStation game, then it transitioned to the N64, then the GameCube, and finally the Xbox 360. <laughs> When Silicon Knights' Norse mythology-based role-playing game finally hit shelves, plans for a trilogy were in sight, until the game's poor critical reception and limited sales, combined with Silicon's own disastrous legal troubles, ensured that the franchise ended before it could truly begin. Hey, 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 hey! Why are you serving him? He could be the one doing all the killing around here. Do you agree with our list? Oh please, do we have to go through this every single morning? Which video game franchise do you think failed? For more reflective top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm not coming back. I'm out.